Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Small Islands by Mushroom Games and Lucky Duck Games. It plays one to four players, takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Small Islands, you are going to be taking along your tiles and placing them down to create well, small islands. You'll be utilizing these islands to complete objectives, to place down your locations onto the islands, and score points based on certain criteria needed based on the cards that you have selected. You're going to have a card for each of the rounds, and that card will be used to distinguish each of the different islands and uh, what you need on them in order for you to place down your little habitats or little villages, which will then hopefully score you a certain number of points based on that same card, um, based on other criteria. So maybe you'll need an island of some type that has like trees on it, and then if you have those trees, you can then score points for the fruit on it. And you'll go through these stacks of tiles, placing them down, or choosing to place down these little boats. And these boats are what's going to trigger the end of each of the rounds. When that happens, players are going to score their points and move on to the next round, continuing until everybody has placed down their boat. Then after that, whoever has the most points based on their objectives they've completed and how many points they get, you will see who wins the game. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, a family-friendly game with some unique complex strategy attached to it in the game of Small Islands. It's super cute. To set up the game Small Islands, go ahead and take out every single tile from the game and put it aside. Find the four tiles with the seagulls on them, and then have one player connect them based on the rules of the game to make sure that the tiles are accurate. You have to make sure that they have land with land and water with water, and also that they connect in a certain way to which you can place more tiles down on them. Then, after that, go ahead and take the rest of the tiles, flip them face down, shuffle them up, and put them in piles, and place three out onto the board along with, of course, the navigation tile. Take the player boats and place them on top or in front of the other tiles that you've placed down, as well as all the objective cards. Make sure they're also shuffled. You'll take the navigation tokens and place them all face down and shuffle them into a stack next to your boat tokens, and give every single player eight of the villages of their color, along with four tokens of their color, two random tiles from the stack, from the stockpile, and one objective card from the deck. You'll also go ahead and take all the victory point tokens, make sure they're um, in numbered order, and place them aside so players can take points when they promote and, of course, discover their own villages and gain points that way, and set any solo cards aside unless you're playing the solo game mode. Uh, you're only going to have four buildings ever in the game, and so the rest of your buildings will be set aside in a pile that you'll be gathering whenever you run out of those buildings, giving yourself four at all times. Then, after that, you're ready to begin the game. Select a player to start, and they will take one of the two actions to begin their turn. There are three steps to the game. The first one is going to be the preparation. Then, it's going to be exploration, and finally, reward. To begin, go ahead and start with the preparation. Give every player an additional two objective cards. Then, they should have a total of three in their hand. Have them select one for this round, one for the next round by placing a building on top of it, and then the third one will be discarded. So you're only ever going to have two objectives in front of you at any given point in time, one for the first and one for the next round. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and also take six tiles from the supply and place them on top of the navigation stack. Once you've done that, you're ready to go. Simply have the first player begin the exploration phase. In the exploration phase, there are two choices, explore or land, and most of the time you're going to explore. In order to explore, you'll simply take the two tiles you have starting in your hand, draw one of the three face-up tiles and put it into your hand, and then choose one of the tiles in your hand to place down, following placement rules onto the main area, which is going to help create the island. After you've done so, you can choose one of your tokens if you would like, choose front or back, and place it on any of the spaces provided on the islands. Token must always be on another icon. You can't simply place it somewhere else off to the side, unless, of course, it is an anchor. After doing so, your turn is going to end, and the next player is going to begin, selecting to either explore or to land. The only time you can land is if all of these stacks from the deck here, the beginning starter navigation deck, are emptied, and you're only pulling from the supply. If you would like at that point, you can choose to land. You'll take the colored boat that is yours and place it anywhere that is applicable in the little small island board space. That will trigger basically the end of the round and that's where players are going to move on to the next phase. The reward phase is very simple. How it works is you're going to flip over your objective card for that round, not the, pre not the next round card. That one's got your little building on it. And then you're going to check your mission and your reward. The mission is what you need in order for you to put a building on an island. 
island. Basically, this one here would say you need these three symbols and this other two symbols in order to put a building on one of the building spaces. And the building spaces are little squares. And then it tells you how many points you get for being able to do so. And you can put as many of the buildings that you have down onto the board, provided that you only put one building on each island. So if there are two islands and both of them meet your criteria, you can place two buildings, one on one and one on the other, and then score the points based on that. Then, of course, every player will do that in turn order after the player who had placed the previous ship tile down, and you'll discard all your objective and or your uh, rewards and bonus cards into the discard pile and shuffle them up. After you've gained your points, you'll take them from the pile here and put them into your reserve and begin the next round, selecting more objective cards, put them into your hand, and of course adding new cards to the stack here and allowing the next player to begin by drawing one of the cards and placing it down onto the small island's board space. And the game will keep going like that until all of the different boats have been placed down, and there's four, four of the different rounds that are going to take place to score. After which, whoever has the most points at the end of the game of small islands is the winner. It's fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but with a lot of complex strategy when it comes to placing down pieces and where they go throughout the game of small islands. So this game is a tile placement game like Carcassonne, where you're placing down tiles from your hand onto the board in order to score points at the end of the round. You're trying to create uh, different types of islands, whether you want to be big or small is going to be based on your objective. And of course, there are different objective cards that'll ask you for different requirements and of course, points based on different requirements as well. So for instance, you might score two points for each building there plus one, or you might simply score uh, one point for each building and one point for each of the lotuses, uh, one point for each leaf and then two additional points so on and so forth and then of course the requirements are going to tell you like oh you need a building and two anchors here or you need three lotuses and you're going to need two leaves and in order to place a building there you'll need to do that and of course refreshing you're going to always have to want to refresh always to four so you always have four if able because you might run out and it's not really likely to happen but it can utilizing these tokens in the game is very important you don't want to just simply go ahead and place them wherever you need to make sure that they benefit you and can help you complete your objectives and of course if you're running out of time it's always good to use all of them because you can score points when placing them down onto the board. Eventually here, this game is going to uh, create this large island board, just like Carcassonne and any other type of tile placement game that you've seen that kind of uh, uh, creates this vast, beautiful array of different islands and different ships going in different locations, attempting for you to try and create the best works of art that you possibly can while there's still time playing this game. This game is kind of uh, zen-like in the way that you're placing things down. You're not super worried about what other players are doing, except for when they mess up your best laid plans. Uh, but most of the time it just kind of happens. It's never somebody's out, out, out to get you. They're always trying to look out for getting their objectives. Another thing I like about this game too is your objective card is important for you this round, but you cannot forget about your next round's objective card as well. And sometimes it's good to lay down tiles in order for you to separate um, this set of wins for the next set of wins to try and net points. And maybe this round you're not going for many points because you're trying to work for next round to give you as many as you possibly can get. What's also cool about this game too is you have this stack of resources, these tiles here, which means that you can't just simply go ahead and land whenever you want. And landing is very, very unique in this game. You can choose to do it early or later, and you only can do it once before you basically have to let other people do it. And of course, the last player kind of gets the last choice, but also a little bit more control over the game because you can keep pulling these tiles from the reserve even after the tiles run out from the stack on the navigation tile. And uh, it's kind of a game of chicken in a way. Who wants to pull out first? Who thinks they're going to score the most points on the round? And will it be beneficial for you to wait for your next objective to score points? Another thing I like about this game too is the fact that you can play in more advanced mode, but it's not more complex. Instead of using one objective card, you can take the rewards and requirements and separate them into two different stacks and shuffle them and deal them out to each player just like you would cards. But instead of one objective card, you would get a pair of these two cards. And at the beginning of the game, as you know, you get three and three. You are going to be using these guys over and over again, so you will need to shuffle them up in the discard pile when they basically run out and shuffle them up into the deck, so that way you're always constantly getting a flow of different types of cards. 
which is not really important, but it's something to uh, kind of note and pay attention to. And of course, placement is drastically important. It could be the difference between one or two islands, a big or a small island, the ability to place where you want to place or not. And you have to always keep track of things. If you don't mind having a little bit of memory, a little bit of competition involved in a game that's not extremely ag actively aggressive towards other players, but something that has enough strategy to keep you interested and entertained and working with other players to kind of maintain the, uh, <laughs> the tranquility of the small islands area, then this is going to be a fun little game for you. Uh, personally, this is kind of like a mid-puzzle game. I do enjoy these type of games, especially tiling games, but uh, my wife is definitely better at this one than I am, and she does uh, stomp when it comes to placing down tiles. And for me, I'm not super great at it, but it's one I've really, really enjoyed. This is a game that's easily going to stay in my collection. It's one I'm going to be sitting on for quite some time. I enjoy this game actually more than Carcassonne, because it has a little bit more variety. Now, uh, speaking of variety, what uh, is also nice is in the game, if you complete certain objectives, you'll be able to open up a secret pack of cards. I won't tell you where they are, but they're somewhere secretly in the game box. And every time you complete a game, whether it's you or somebody else that completes an objective, on the side or the back of the rule book, you can go ahead and mark that off, indicating that you have finished that. And when you've unlocked enough of them, you're going to trigger the ability to have even more components to the game, which is really, really nice. I love it when games have secret little aspects or mechanisms or additional content that you didn't know about at first, and all of a sudden you just get this little bonus extra surprise. It's always a fun little thing to kind of add to a game uh, that's almost never expected because it's so infrequent. Navigation tiles are great, the content and quality of all the pieces is excellent, the artwork is beautiful, and the theme fits well. You do feel like you're building small islands and that you're working together to kind of create this space that does uh, ensure the tranquility of the land. Uh, I personally love this game. Um, I'm not good at it though, and for people who don't like puzzle games, who don't like the feeling of their best laid plans getting blown up on accident, or maybe even by on purpose, uh, they might not like this game as much. There's a little bit of luck as far as what tiles come out, what you have in your hand. For the most part, it's a lot about strategy, how you place where and when and what you're focusing on, whether you be objectives now or later. Small Islands, a solid game. I am, I'm, I, I really like this game. This is, this is going to be a great family game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in this video, take a look at the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up Small Islands from Lucky Duck. And of course, you can also go ahead and check out our website, which has blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Moonshells on the boats, it's coming. We've got all our stuff ready and it looks good. The last two things we're working on is getting the um, manufactured uh, deluxe insert, as well as, of course, the pins, which will be coming any day now. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to creating some small islands with you next time.